All right, so I want to pick your brain a little bit yes, and, and say, man, where does, this, where does this story come from? Where do these keep coming from? Uh, well, this, uh, we're talking about Bloodline. <laughs> uh, it's a deep dive into the family. And uh, I created the show with my brother, Glenn, and our longtime friend and writing partner, Daniel Zellman. Um, prior to this, we did a series called Damages, which was a look at the professional world mm -hmm. and didn't have as much family stuff in it. And we decided we want to really look at family and the roles that we all play within our families and the roles that we'd like to not play within the family and how mm -hmm. those roles are assigned. Um, and the desire was to take that and turn it into a, a drama series about a family that they're just normal people that eventually becomes a thriller. Uh, and takes the audience on an entertaining, emotional, tense, um, suspenseful ride. He's got that pitch down pretty well, though, you think? He's got, we've been yeah. at it for a few hours today. There you so go. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you got a chance, when you all of a sudden are, are going to become a part of this and, and you're looking at this, what was it about the script that really drew you to it? Um, I'm, I'm from a very large family myself. I'm one of 11 kids, uh, and it uh, resonated with me deeply, this idea that... Um, you know, like Todd said, these roles that were given, and 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 also um, when when a tragedy or loss or trauma strikes a family, when when a family is young, mm -hmm. the show is predicated by the death of um, a, a little girl, our younger sister, um, and the events surrounding that death really go on to up uh, and and their lack of uh, emotional intelligence and healing from that death. Yeah. Um, go on to affect this group of people for the rest of their lives. And um, I think it's fascinating to, th to think about how, as adults, we remember things differently as kids than our siblings do, yep. um, and, and how those differences define us, what we choose to remember, what we choose to forget, um, what is handed down to us from our parents that we don't question, things like that, uh, I think all resonated with me a lot. And then you get to that point when you become an adult, you start to question it. Right? Absolutely. You know, I, I think that's what happens is that you have kids that's definitely what happened with me in, in my own life I, yeah. mean, I have three kids myself and so you start this big sh identity shift happens mm -hmm. and in the show uh, my character is is having his first child as well and i think it's, it's it's fascinating to think of you know the show is so much too about generational yeah. um dysfunction and and um even even abuse in some ways mm -hmm. and um, emotional abuse and some physical abuse and 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 in the way that those things are just not swept under the rugs, our, our, our minds and our, our hearts just don't work that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, those are things that are going to affect people for the rest of their lives. I've got a buddy who always says, we all have our shit, you know? Uh, yeah. And I mean, yeah. that's, that's what I, I love about this is that there, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Right. Yeah, in terms of the siblings and that dynamic and, you know, then in this, in this third season, Kevin becomes a father and so his role changes and his uh, desire to wake up every day and what he's living for is different mm -hmm. now that he has a son versus you know when he was just a, a husband struggling in a relationship and a brother and, and a son himself um, so that we all have our shit kind of idea well it also keeps changing and, the, yeah. and how we see ourselves and how we process that and how we want to be seen also keeps changing. I know in the first episode, the, the production, it's all at night. It's all in the yeah. dark. Yeah, and that's where, yeah. I mean, I the was, first episode of this, this season. season. Yeah, yeah. This new season. Yeah. That, was, that was interesting. We shot, it was night shoots for the first couple, for two, the three first two weeks. episodes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a couple months we were up at night. That was a really, really weird thing. Your circadian rhythm gets really, really off, you know. Yeah. You're trying to sleep during the day and go to work at night. And you know, you're being asked to do this really difficult material it was weird but then um, you picked up on it was it uh you could you could sense that it was all obviously at night as oh absolutely and it wasn't you know so many things that are shot at night have that interior light of the car uh -huh. which lights everybody up but you right. didn't you didn't choose to do that right mm. and it kept it genuine it was yeah awesome. well hopefully you can see it i mean that's well, always the question you, can. <laughs> you know because depending on what if you're watching it on your phone or you're watching it on a computer but there was that desire to not have those 
artificial things. Mm -hmm. I think uh, so much of the success of Blonde Line is due to, uh, there's many, many great artists, but our cinematographer, Jaime Reynosa, who's responsible for things like mm -hmm. that, for sort of, as you say, authentic yep. night, right. light. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it sounds like it's an easy thing to do. I think it's incredibly difficult. He's a master at yeah. it. Um, very cool. Yeah. Great to meet you. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Thanks for Thanks watching. Thanks so much. Nice to meet you. you too.